Until 1954, tents were heavy canvas shelters held up by a rigid skeleton of poles and anchored with ropes. Similar structures had been in use since the Civil War. In 1954, Bill Moss revolutionized the tent industry by creating what he called the pop tent. The pop tent was lightweight, easy to assemble, and very stable. The pop tent utilized tension fabric confining flexed poles. This umbrella-shaped tent was the beginning of Moss tents. I guess I do want to have unique designs, but I don't want to have them unique because they're unique. I, I want to make a tent uh, as an architectural and engineering breakthrough to make the person who is using that shelter more comfortable. And in doing this, uh, they do become unique. Uh, some tents can look new unique, but uh, that may be all they have. I feel that a tent has to do more than just keep the rain off, that it, ha it uh, uh, we uh, experience a, a, a life system inside that tent. The camper is in it a lot, especially when it's raining. And to make this pleasant and functional, uh, I feel, is part of the design. He then turned his attention to creating the perfect shelter for family campers, canoeists, and fishermen, with designs so successful and technology so advanced that they also became popular among professional adventurers with rigorous demand. Um, it's, just, it's a magical tent. It's great. It's been good for mountaineering. We've had it up to over 22,000 feet. We've had it in windstorms up to um, gale force winds on the ocean, uh, 80 to 100 mile an hour winds in mountains situations, and it's withstood them. It's been wonderful. wanted to put the, the ultimate tent on the market. So we started this little company in Camden, Maine to put out uh, what I would like to think is a perfect tent or the perfect fly rod. And, and it's, uh, it's starting to catch on. Using a series of arches, the arch creates a different kind of plane. A, tent, uh, a pole tent generally looks like a house or a wall tent. But an arch tent changes the shape from a rectilinear shape to a curvilinear shape. And a, curvy, a curvilinear shape lends itself to the elements, wind loads, snow loads, uh, much better than a rectilinear shape, which is the conventional house shape. And I can say that I am proud of the workmanship that goes into our tents by the craftspeople of our area who are dedicated to making a good product. And this sort of reflects on everybody, and this makes, makes it all worthwhile. Every single tent is set up and inspected before leaving Moss. Reinforced seams, the zippers, the bar tacking, the corner detailing, and the pole tunnels. Our quality control is rigorous. We'll replace free any tent that fails due to a defect in workmanship. And you can't beat our lifetime pole replacement. No matter how your pole is damaged, we'll repair or replace it for free for the lifetime of the tent.
Now, their situation, we had the stargazer in a tropical storm in the South Pacific, and there were other people camping at this beach, and it was, um, they said it was this biggest storm they'd had in over 10 years that hit the Kona coast of Hawaii. And when we woke up in the morning, ours was the only tent standing. And we did have our baby with us. It was about eight months old at the time. Um, so we, 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 we essentially stake our lives on the, on the moss tent. The Stala is a perfect, perfect tent for um, kayaking or bicycling or, or things where you want just a small, compact tent for trips when you, want it, when you need to carry it uh, in small spaces on the back of a bicycle or stuffed in the front of your kayak. Okay. The Solet um, is a one-man tent or one-person tent that enables you to get away by yourself. It's lightweight, it packs up small, it sets up fairly quickly. If I had to do it again, I'd buy this tent again for the looks because I think it looks distinctive and graceful and artistic and because I know that it's a very functional tent. I'm, I'm confident in it. I've used it in as extreme conditions as I ever intend to use it. Wind, condensation conditions, snow, mushy wet snow that I never intended to be caught in, but I was. And I have never had any problem. It's also lightweight. It's, it's perfect for backpacking. It's plenty big for me and my boyfriend. And it's just an ideal tent for me. The Encore is fabulous. We needed a tent one time for a trip uh, where we had our family and it was a drive-in trip. We weren't able to hike and we needed to set up a large tent as our base before we headed up into the high country. And it's set up quickly for the size. It's amazing how quickly it sets up. The sides open up, the top opens up. It gives you all the incredible views and visions of the uh, other Nocian Net top tents as the Starlet, Stardome but it gives you the size for an entire family. Welcome to my Moss Olympic. Uh, the first thing I want to say about the design is my own personal experiences. I've been in about every type of weather you can possibly be in in this tent. And from those experiences, it's my favorite on the market. I've been in 60 mile an hour winds, hitting me broadside. I've been in freezing rain. I've been in snow. I've been in ice. I've been in the worst condensating conditions you can possibly be in in this design. And it's been the best performing design I've ever, ever tried. And I try a lot of tents. First thing that you're going to notice about this type of design is that it's similar in shape to a dome design. However, the biggest aspect, positive aspect of this design is the fact that it does not act like a dome in terms of airflow. As you can see here, you have two large doorways. The biggest problem with any dome design is the fact that you get a lot of condensation because you cannot get convective air currents flowing through the upper side of the tent design. Because of the window and door shape here and here, you can see right away, you get an excellent convective airflow over the upper surface of this tent. And that is one of the major features of the three pole initial design of this tent. Something that you're going to see right away in the, in the tent is, first of all, it's gorgeous. It's really nice when you are cooped up in a tent, which is what you're buying a tent for, is foul weather and being co cooped up in it. It is very comfortable, very psychologically comfortable. Two people, plus gear, plus dog, it is wonderful in terrible weather. People that have seen the tent and have been inside, they're all envious. They want one, too. It's so easy to set up. Um, the space is so almost enormous when you have a vestibule on you can shove all of your gear into the vestibule and still have the full floor space for living reading sleeping whatever you want so i would say it's a, a tent that's generated some envy the other thing you'll notice immediately is the fact that a long lean person in a sleeping bag is not going to touch another side of the tent and this is nine feet nine inches from point to point here and that makes even the tallest person uh, good, comfortable sleeping. I think what really endeared me to this tent was I went rafting down 
Desolation in Gray's Canyon in, in Utah. And this was in early spring, it was in March. I had no idea what I was getting into. And I think it snowed about six out of the nine days we were on the river. And every, every day, I didn't have a wetsuit, so every day, what I could not wait to do was to get out of that river and take off my soaking wet sneakers and get someplace dry. And it was always about dusk when we, we finally reached a place to, where we could camp. And uh, the snow was starting to fall, and I didn't care about dinner. I didn't care about anything but getting dry. So I set up my tent, and it's just, it's just feeding poles through a few sleeves. It's nothing to set up. I didn't stake it out. I, wasn't, I think my hands would have shattered if I tried to pound anything with them just set up there on the beach. The fly goes on really quickly, and I stayed dry that whole time. You'll see the front vestibule is also a major plus in this design. It gives a tremendous amount of coverage here, so when you are coming in from severe weather, from a rainstorm or snowstorm, you're able to zip the door behind you and come in here, uh, take off the wet clothing, because part of the getting any moisture in a tent or any snow in a tent is the fact that your clothing is dragging a tremendous amount of that uh, moisture in with you. You can take it off, you can shake it off out in this area, and then open this door and come into the tent uh, much cleaner and drier than you probably would in any other type of design. Also, you can't beat this design for cooking in. It's definitely the nicest design to be able to sit in cold weather. You'll be sitting in your sleeping bag, sort of half in your sleeping bag, just like this. You can cook out of this without any problems with carbon monoxide or problems with any weather really getting at your uh, equipment, and that's a very important feature. Freestanding is a very important uh, aspect when you are looking to buy a tent. Uh, the main thing about that design is the fact that if something, some stake pulls out, or if you have a sandy spot, you can't get good staking all the way around your design, the tent is not going to fall down on you. Also, the, the fly arrangement, the tautness of the design is not totally dependent on that type of thing, and that's the biggest advantage of a freestanding design. You still have to stake it out. And uh, one story, of course, uh, is a close friend of mine in the middle of the night uh, had a freestanding tent. He got out of his tent uh, to do the obvious in the middle of the night, and the tent immediately blew into the lake. And there he was standing there watching all his equipment floating on the lake. So stake down your freestanding tent. The fact is when people are out there buying a tent, they're looking for so many different aspects. So few people are going to be climbing Everest out there. What people really want is their money's worth. That's very important. And what that means to me is excellent construction. You can't beat the quality of the design. It means that the tent is going to work the way a tent ought to work. It means that the tent will hold together for as long as you want the tent to hold together. And you can beat it up. And I've seen school groups, I've seen people trash these designs. And they hold up to it. And uh, at the end of that period of time, um, if after 10 years you want to go on to another moss design, you can sell your tent. It is saleable because it is still in good condition. And you can do that and retain the value that you put into the design. Comfort is the number one aspect of the, re and that's the reason why you're spending money on equipment is for the comfort aspect and the protection of that equipment. And the comfort of this tent for two people, plus gear, plus wet dog, cannot be touched. taking two Quechuan Indians up to 18,000 feet on their first peak ascent. We taught them how to climb and taught them how to ski. And they spent their first night up on the snow. They'd never been on the snow before. And the moon came up later that night. And all night long, we heard the far end zipper going zip, 
and giggling and zipping it closed and then zipping it open and zipping it closed. I don't think they got much sleep that night. And thank goodness they had a door at their end and we had a door at our end, so it didn't interfere with our sleep that much. Out of uh, striving for simplicity of design, simplicity of design, basics, is very difficult to do. The tendency in our society is to constantly add uh, to, a, to our lives, to our technology, to our architecture, to make it better. Uh, I find very few people with the philosophy of taking away these things to make it better. Uh, this is the basis on how I design.